everyone, Lau here, welcome back to my channel and I hope you can hear me, I hope it's not, uh, I hope I, I'm speaking loud enough, I don't want to speak too loud because I have a feeling other people might hear it, <laughs> I'm still um, in Düsseldorf in the hotel room because of Nachtlichtcon, so German pony convention, um, but this is not the video. <laughs> Um, it's very early in the morning, I'm going to get some breakfast and then I'm going to head uh, to a flea market before that. And then there are two flea markets that I want to visit also tomorrow. So let's see if that makes up a whole video or in the end I will put some other flea market stuff in there as well because the convention itself is a separate video. Most likely it will be out already. So have fun, follow me around on flea markets in not my local area somewhere else in Düsseldorf. What started pretty well with a couple of boxes full of toys, yeah, the good old Steffi Love, then we have a naked Phoebus from, from uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, this was Prince Eric from uh, The Little Mermaid, and a couple of other dolls, bigger ones, baby dolls, and um, well, this is pretty interesting. This is a nice doll, not a good, no, good quality, but she is uh, Kayla from the Mermaid Fantasy Dolls, uh, from the Barbie line in 2002. So she's a kind of desired doll for like, the, you know, the early Y2K collectors, so not really for me. Also her tail was a little bit broken. Uh, little pink Yoshi there and lots of little knickknacks. A Benjamin Blümchen. I have no idea what that little doll was. Probably something from Fisher Price. But don't you just love it, digging in those boxes where you hope the next treasure is under the uh, first layer of toys. A little filly pony. So let's head to the next box, uh, which is more filled with bigger toys. You see already like uh, there's a Pluto plush. I don't know if that was some cashier toy from, from an old... Um, a, like toy shop. This is I think a very creepy Anna doll. There's a there's a beanie baby in the back, this little dotted uh, bear. A couple of um, Mickey Mouse comics and I think that was the last box. Um, I already saw that there were more dolls. Uh, maybe also an action man there in the front. Okay, some newer Barbie, I think that was. And what's the red hat there? Uh, is it an Ariel? No, no, I think that's just another like, clone doll or Steffi Love. This is also from Simba, one of the smaller dolls. This is the real Mattel one. This is a Kelly. Um, she belongs into a um, two pack uh, to an Ariel doll. And um, yeah, there she is. That's uh, the Ariel doll that she belongs to. That's. Uh, from the time when Mattel first took over the Little Mermaid license in the um, in the 90s from Tyco. So this is the set they belong together, but I have that Kelly and to be honest, I'm very happy with my Tyco Ariels, which I kind of prefer. Um, but this is a very cool doll, I think from the mid, from the mid 90s, mid to late 90s, maybe 97 or something, not sure right now, uh, but yeah, I mean, she didn't have any of her real outfit and I already have the Kelly, so I decided to leave them there. So what have we here? There's a little uh, case full of Fashion Poly, which is absolutely not my cup of tea. But I think there were also some Barbies that I spotted immediately. Oh, you can't see them yet, but there's one. Uh, the faces, from the faces, I think they are um, Early in early 2000s because I think they are already on the generation girl face or like she still has the older body type but yeah I don't like their faces so that's not not really interesting for me I think she's even newer more like 2010s maybe early fashionista days or something um, not bad dolls the hair was in good uh, kind of good shape but they are not really uh, the style of Barbies I'm looking for also not that dress no. <laughs> What have we here? Ah, oh, one of the big Monchi cheese. I kind of find them pretty often lately. 
those the ones with the blinking eyes I'm not a Monchichi guy, so but I like to film them for all of you who are into them. This was like one of my favorite stands there. Um, it was a couple of friends, they were all around my age. Uh, the, the women were just selling fashion, but uh, some of the boys or guys had their old toys with them. So this is a box full of, I think, 90s, maybe early mid 90s toys, like this cool Kenner alien thing. I've never seen one. Uh, in reality so I was kind of interested and then lots of other like action figures of various kinds that I cannot identify but a lot of them are the G.I. Joe type so I don't know I was kind of interested I, I have a couple of G.I. Joes from one of my last flea market hunts so I was like ah oh, they are small and some of them look pretty cool this is a really good looking Batman figure, but I am not a Batman fan at all. I think there was a Spider-Man or something or some other um, superhero. This is definitely one of the Kenna Batman variants. Yeah, this yellow black one. Batman doesn't look like that in the movies, but <laughs> uh, Kenner had lots of cool fe uh, features. Uh, this was another one, kind of G.I. Joe, that I was interested in. So I put it aside. And uh, here as well but with this one I started actually to check if it's really uh, G.I. Joe but isn't it actually from Leonard so it clicked so those are like at least most of them uh, Leonard Kors or the Kors the Corpse <laughs> which is a kind of a G.I. Joe knockoff line but this one you see the white guy I still kept out there um, and with this one this set Hasbro so that's a real one very first things that I picked up uh, were these three uh, figurines out of this like little box of more boyish toys but I swear the rest of the stuff that I pick up um, in this video are definitely girls toy uh, related but I kind of couldn't resist because first and foremost I was interested in this one wow, what, what is this right um, but I kind of uh, in, in, not immediately but I kind of recognized it as something belonging to aliens and or alien aliens <laughs> there's so many different movies I've not watched any of them but I know that uh, Kenner had the license actually from the uh, 70s on so whatever I know that in the 90s they definitely had a very very uh, successful toy line of crazy different looking aliens um, and this is from 1994 so that's from that toy line um, and let me look it's called uh, the swarm alien and it's actually not complete I mean anyway it's not complete but uh, it's actually two different aliens and this one would sit on top of the other so it's like you know I don't know like, like a parasite on top of the other and they kind of melt together and look like one um, but it's it's see-through it's got see-through plastic um, it has a typical alien look very scary here with these big teeth but it's more like an insect and it's it's kind of cool it's, it's a very very um, popular toy line from Kenner in the 90s you can push this button then it flaps the wings uh, it actually also has a battery compartment I tried to put new batteries in there um, but I don't know if it's maybe just not working because it needs the other part to it or it's not working because it's not working <laughs> I mean it's broken or whatever I think it just made a like screeching sound which is typical for this alien species as I said I have never watched any of the alien movies because it's like too it goes too much into the um, like horror um, genre for me so that's why I, I don't want to watch it but this looks crazy cool and I just wanted to have it as a representation of that very iconic Kenner toy line so. and then these two um, yeah, if you remember one of my last flea market videos, then you might remember me talking about uh, G.I. Joe. And this is another G.I. Joe. This is not, and this is actually more the reason why I picked them up. And this box, there were lots of these um, extra figures in this size. Um, but this was the only one that had the Hasbro um, marking, so it's actually directly at the booty here. 
here it says uh, 1987 Hasbro so this is a real GI Joe I also looked it up I mean it's not that I want to now start collecting GI Joe or want to pick up every GI Joe that I find um, but it was nice to pick both of them up because yeah GI Joe but this it looks completely uh, similar right the statue it has the same points of articulation the same crotch area you know um, but this is actually from from Leonard and all of the other ones in that box also were from Leonard and if you uh, have heard of that toy company before it's also more popular for kind of doing knockoffs of other toy lines like there are also Leonard ponies for example but they're pretty cute and also this is a really good kind of knockoff line they're called Leonard um, Corps and it also says it here I think yeah it says it here I don't know if you can read that but it says corpse and this is a whole kind of G.I. Joe knockoff line but with th they're almost the same if you have them in hand the real G.I. Joe feels a little bit more heavy this is a little bit more lightweight uh, I guess that some parts here are hollow plastic and this is probably fully um this, there's no hollow parts or something but like uh the articulation and everything is, is just the same um, and I, that's why I wanted to have it because I know that a lot of like boys uh, back in the day like in the 80s and early 90s um, they liked G.I. Joe but they had a lot of these Leonard Corps uh, figures because well they were less expensive and you could get them in huge packs so G.I. Joe's were always sold separately I mean this one this is actually a vehicle driver so it's called Worms and it came with the um, 1987 or also more like 88 released Cobra Maggot which is a like a tank vehicle but uh, these Leonard Corpse figures were released uh, in two packs three packs four packs five packs six packs whatever 12 packs and you got a lot of like you got more buck for your money right uh, so a lot of children had these and they're actually also pretty cool this one looks very spacey you know it's also from the space line called uh, Star Force so yeah this is from 94, I think, this is from 87. So just wanted to pick both of them up. More Barbies. So it was definitely a good Barbie day that day. Um, there were a couple that I was interested in. Like the first one was, again, Sun Jewel Barbie. I have her. Uh, this one here, I recognize by her earrings. This is Secret Hearts Barbie. And I have part of her outfit at home. So I was intrigued. They are not in very good condition. A couple of them have broken necks like um, the um, this one, the Jasmine doll. Um, yeah, I have Sun Jewel Barbie, as I said. Mine has cut hair, but I decided to put her back. This this poor uh, Teresa had completely cut hair, uh, so I was not interested in that one. But the other two, as they were pretty cheap, um, like two euros per doll, like why not? I think I can fix a broken neckline and make the hair pretty cute again. And yeah. You will see that it's a very Barbie heavy video. Not that I bought, I well bought also a couple of Barbies, but um, you will see so many. And uh, this was the first vendor that I found that had Barbies and I, I had to pick some of them up, although they were in very bad condition. So uh, this uh, Jasmine was missing the head, so I had to give her a new um, neck joint. I mean, not a new, it was still inside her head, but I had to mold uh, parts of her neckline new and uh, she also has um, a little bit of a ripped neckline but it's, it's not as bad because her head was still on um, I wanted to get this one because I recognized her at the flea market she still had her earrings uh, that's the reason why I uh, wanted her and it's also how I recognized her these big pink glittery heart earrings uh, this is Secret Hearts Barbie and um, I knew that I had part of her outfit because this skirt goes to her. Uh, she's from 1992, yeah, 1992. Um, and the core feature of her was that she had these, um, these patterns on the skirt, these hearts, and they would appear in different like climates, you know, and I think with warmth they would appear and with cold they would disappear or the other way around. Now they are kind of always on here, so it's not really, does not really do anything. Um, but I knew I had the skirt and that's why I picked her up. Well, her hair is, I thought it is better than it actually is. Uh, I think it is a little bit cut, but I mean, it's still pretty long, so that's not 
very like it's not very noticeable um, but it is pretty gray and this is something that I don't know I have not heard a lot of people talk about in the Barbie and I know I'm not really in the Barbie collectors community but I'm watching a couple of Barbie YouTubers and that this kind of hair which is the um, is it a canicolon it's just a very soft one the, the oh this feels like cotton candy if it's in, if you have washed it if you did, did a boil wash or boil perm etc uh, this can get pretty gray if you look in the back here it is still very light and this yellowy platinum uh, blonde but the parts in the, in the front here this this has gotten a little bit gray. I don't know how that happens or how you can remove that because it's not just dirt. I have washed the hair intensively, so that's not what it is, but it's still okay. So yeah, and I have put now together this wonderful outfit for her, outfit for her because um, just the skirt is the, the original one. Um, so I have like combined two very famous Barbie outfits now in one to give her this wonderful look. Uh, white shoes, uh, that's correct, she came with white shoes, but then um, the correct skirt. This top, which also is actually a short dress to be quite honest, but you can pull it together, you can put both together, uh, is from French Barbie, so like a very like a budget Barbie with just this short uh, dress, but matches so well and then this uh, like Stola thing here is from Crystal Barbie so <laughs> I've given her three different uh, outfits in one but she looks amazing doesn't she and just this little pink um, purse here uh, she actually came with like a heart purse I don't know if it's really a purse but it's a big like heart in this um, iridescent fabric and oh, she looks amazing don't you think so um, yeah, I was kind of looking for a jasmine for a while, but I really wanted one that like comes naked because I had a couple of jasmine outfits actually from different, um, you know, from different halls where I had different outfits in there, like outfit, outfit lots, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, um, because uh, I couldn't really tell which jasmine this is at when I saw her at the flea market, but I knew that it is one from the early 90s, so exactly when Aladdin was released. Yes, it's a Disney doll, Al Aladdin jasmine, so <laughs> if, in case you didn't know. <laughs> um, but of course Mattel had the rights to do the Disney dolls back then, and so they look very Barbie-like, but from the face, can tell immediately that it is jasmine and it's not just a random Barbie. Um, so actually this is uh, the, the, this doll exactly, uh, I, I can tell that by now by she having um, purple earrings. She's one of the more like budget line Jasmine dolls that came with a bathing suit or like, I don't know, she's called the uh, Water Jewel Magic Jasmine. She had a purple and gold like bathing suit bikini situation and also there was an Aladdin also released with her, not, not together in the same package but you could also get Aladdin with the same kind of outfit, just the boy version. <laughs> um, and it was like it uh, had a, um, a jewel on the front of her bathing suit would change color in water. So she was more like a water play doll. Um, I have now put her in like a combination of two different Jasmine outfits, like this yellow one. So I have this veil and the headpiece and uh, the trousers. Those actually uh, go to um, the Jasmine and Raja friendship set. So she was released uh, together with Raja, which is the, the tiger, her pet tiger, uh, uh, as a plush, a small plush. And there she came with this outfit. And um, then there is this uh, glittery um, pink stuff here, which I have put her as a, as a waist uh, belt, something like that here. Actually, this would go also on her head. And it is a fashion pack for Jasmine that came as a second outfit in one of the normal Jasmine looking ones. So there was a Jasmine doll in the 90s with a normal blue outfit that had a second fashion pack in it. And this comes from it. This, <laughs> this bra piece actually, it's not from a Jasmine doll, but it matches so well that I put it together and I realized I don't have a Jasmine, um, like bikini, whatever bra piece. So, because this is actually just from a Steffi Love Mermaid, also from the 90s. So, this is the outfit I gave her. She looks amazing in my opinion. Uh, her hair is also not that in a super good condition anymore. It's not such a nice quality as this Barbie here. It's more rough. And I did the same that I, uh, that I do always. Um, with you know doll hair, uh, boil wash, boil 
not perm, but um, doing the um, straightening iron thing that I do with my ponies. Nothing really worked, but in the end I put it together in this typical jasmine ponytail anyway, so um, it's okay. So, yeah. More dolls, like this Mycene, for example, um, or a couple of Ken dolls. The, this one is actually pretty cool. I don't know, you can't see it yet, but there she is. Uh, this is actually, I'm kind of mad for not picking up, but now I'm seeing that she's missing her bangs. This is actually Happen and Hair Barbie. She is from 1999, I think. So not exactly my um, era of Barbie that I collect, but she has such a cute face. I have part of her outfit. She was wearing like a huge uh, jeans, like, like, you know, skater jeans. She has I don't know if it's color changing, but definitely she has some couple of colorful hair streaks. Uh, she is on a kind of articulated body. Very cool doll line, happen in hair. Um, and she is on the Bob Mackie face, which makes her pretty uh, cute. Uh, yeah, some cans, as I said. A newer doll, nice hair color, but yeah. A little enchantable, which I'm not into. They're also new. And a couple of more, like more recent dolls. So not a lot from my era, area, from my era in that box. A couple of Dreamtopia mermaids. And yeah, also, also some Steffi Love. A Millie face doll, so very new. And a, an Ever After High. That's series hood, but I don't want to anymore ever after high. What's that? It's like a flocked a Twilight Sparkle fakie. Never seen that, but also not going to pick it up. But really, that day I found so many boxes filled to the brim with Barbies. Uh, next to it, some more, you know, cars and boyish toys. But I, uh, I actually regret not picking up this bullseye, you know, from Toy Story. I have a Toy Story collection. I, I don't have a bullseye. I actually want the big one, but you know, a small one for when I don't have that one yet. Uh, there were a couple of, I think, fakey ponies in there, but yeah, not the kind of fakies I would pick up. And again. Bullseye, eh, I wish I would, would have picked it up. It would have probably been very cheap. You know what? More dolls. Some Dreamtopia mermaids, I think. Uh, this. Ah, oh, yeah, this this was a nice, like, 90s Barbie. Very cute, superstar face. I was just not really feeling it. I couldn't identify her. She was probably a normal, like, budget line doll. Ah, oh, yeah, some interesting scooters and bicycles for Barbie. So if you really wanted to pick up some bar cool Barbie stuff, like, I don't know, is that Barbie? There's a cool popcorn cart. It also reminded me of G3, my little pony, but it, it's not very cute. Horses, so if you want to buy your child anything, a huge Barbie collection, you could have done it there. Oh, and also Garfield. You guys. Barbie mania the day. So many good dolls. Oh, I wish I would have picked her up. This is a Christie. Uh, I have already two Christies though, so I decided against her because I couldn't identify her at that point. But oh, this is actually the uh, United Colors of Bennett and Christie with her original hair style, uh, earrings and ring. And she's from 1990s. So like not her original outfit though, but I was kind of entranced by the other dolls in this box. So like this, this is a Stacy. And there's another Stacy. This is Gymnast Stacy. I remember her from my childhood. I didn't have her, but I love Stacy. Same as I love Skipper. Oh, hi. This was a kind of a knockoff Ken. <laughs> and yeah, I saw it. There was another Stacy size doll. This is uh, the friend of the gymnast Stacy. This is a Whitney, the gymnast Whitney. And there is another very good looking doll from the 90s, 1995 Flower Fun Barbie. I have that dress, so. Um, but the dolls are in pretty good condition. Oh, she's so cute. She re definitely reminds me of my Polly Pocket Stacy that I had 
Very, very similar, but it's not the Polly Pocket Stacy. But I cannot pick up every doll. Whoa, Stacy! So many Stacys! Oh, this box uh, was kind of a treasure because there were like, oh, there were even two more Barbies that I was really tempted and I probably should have picked them up. I hope someone else who is a Cuckoo's Barbie collector picks them up because they were in really good condition. But I picked up these three because I didn't have any Stacys. I mean, I have one Stacy. That's my only boxed item that um, um, the sisters set, where which Barbie, which includes bar a Barbie, a Stacy, and a um, Skipper. Uh, but I didn't have any uh, Stacys out of the box that I could play around with or display really. Uh, this is the original Stacy. Um, Stacy is a sister of Barbie, so uh, Barbie had a lot of sisters over, over time, uh, with Skipper being her original sister and being close to her in age. Uh, a little bit younger is Stacy. She was introduced in 1991 because this doll is from 1991. Um, and then, of course, Barbie had uh, even younger sisters like um, Kelly or. I don't know, now it's called Chelsea and there was also Chrissy in between. Anyways, this is <laughs> this is Stacy. I had a Stacy very similar to this. My Stacy was the Polly Pocket Stacy and it's like like a kind of a grail item that I would really like to have. But it's so difficult to find with the, all the accessories and with the Polly Pocket etc etc. This is the normal um, Stacy called little sister of Barbie just she had obviously a completely different outfit her outfit was very floral and then a very pink puffer jacket and a black hat um, I gave her now this um, skipper fashion pack it's a little bit loose on her but it kind of fits I mean it's an oversized jean jacket so why not so I put it put this outfit on her because the outfit that she came with this actually doesn't really fit her. It doesn't really close all the way in the back, so it's probably not a Stacy or Skipper outfit. And um, the only thing that I can like think of that this would maybe go to is this is not that it's not from from Barbie, so it's probably more from. It could be from Petra's little sister. So from um, she is a little bit more more slim in the back and in the, in the whole torso. It fits. I tried it on on a. Um, on my Peggy, one of my Peggy's, and it fits. So probably this is a fashion pack from Peggy, so Petra, another doll line. Um, but yeah, such a beautiful face. Looks a little bit similar to Skipper. I could be the same face mold. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's a different one. Uh, she has this beautiful, like puffy, um, like crimped hair. Yes, this also is a little bit great. So it's. It used to be more in the typical, you know, light, like sunny blonde um, platinum color. I don't know, it has gotten a little bit gray, but I think it's okay with her. Uh, she has like this puffy, um, typical 90s bangs, and this is the original hairstyle she came with. She even had her original rubber band still in there. Obviously, I replaced it now with a new one, and yeah, I'm really happy. And you guys, these two. They are amazing. They are in such good condition. Uh, this is also um, this is also Stacy. This is her friend um, Janet. No, Whitney. Sorry, Whitney. She also had another friend, Janet. This is Whitney, and this is Stacy from the 1995. So a little bit later on, so she's from 1991. Um, 1995 gymnast Stacy line. So she has a real like gymnastic style body. Uh, even her uh, feet have, have a different, like, you see that? She, my goodness, I can't. The feet can rock side to side and top to bottom, so uh, even more articulate than the normal, like, gymnast style Barbie body. Um, and she even come came with uh, a typical, like, like gymnast uh, equipment, so she came with, like, pretty big, like, uneven bars where she could, like, swing around and all that stuff. And uh, here, Whitney, she came with a, what is it called? This, um, I, I wrote it down, a balance beam, where she could, you know, do her actions on. Um, they are so cute. I always wanted to have this one when I was young because um, I really, really love the gymnast Barbie and that style of body because they could ride horses, you know, you could 
very much better for them on horses. My Stacy only had kind of this body. Uh, I kind of never got them, I don't know why. Um, and um, yeah, in their face paints you can already tell that it is a little bit later in the line. Uh, Stacy, her face looks still a little bit different, more like early 90s. It is the same face mold, it is just painted differently. And they had their original hair bands in. This is everything's original, like the, the, the um, braid is original, this braid is original. I just replaced the rubber bands, the hair is amazing quality. Um, they have their shoes, they have their outfits, everything. They just didn't have their, like, you know, gymnast equipment. Um, oh, by the way, uh, this is the dress that the Jasmine came in when I got her. Um, it was kind of <laughs> completely misused because these are actually not the holes for the sleeves. These are just to make, the, to make it like more um, tailored. Um, but it is a real Barbie dress. I don't know where it comes from, what, whatever, but it must be a fashion pack from the 90s because it has the typical Barbie tag. So, have not researched it yet. Um, yeah, another box of toys, a plushy white dog and a big Twilight Sparkle, which this is a size of G-Force that I actually don't want to pick up, so I immediately put her away. I was searching anymore, but then this happened. Ich wollte es nicht auslösen. <lacht> Hört nicht auf zu singen. <lacht> yeah, I picked it up. I was really not keen on, on, on this. I saw it and I was like, yeah, it's one of the big, you know, fashion style or styling size style. Um, G4 ponies, ah, ha, ha. I, I really don't really need them, I don't want them. The two that I have are just in storage. But then she started talking and singing. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's German. It's pretty loud. I like the song <laughs> in English. Together. I can't sing, but yeah. Um, as I said, she's and now she will talk sometime again. Um, I like that. I don't know. It's German. I wish it would be English. Uh, yeah, yeah. You you sound good. That's that's correct, Twilight. Um, not really because I actually like it. I would love it if it would be English. Oh no, Stacey's are falling down. Come back later. Yeah. And I couldn't resist. It was just one euro. And it's pretty funny. And it's she actually looks good, to be quite honest. It's a nice pose. It's a reboot pose. Um, it's the same pose as like the, the small brushable, um, like Princess Twilight Sparkle in the reboot pose would come in. Uh, she has these translucent wings. Good look for Twilight Sparkle. So yeah, then I pulled the trigger and I actually really like her now. Um, this is actually the uh, Friendship Duet um, from the movie line, Twilight Sparkle from 2017. So that's why she's also singing a song from the movie. Um, and actually she came with Spike. Now I'm really questioning like, oh, maybe Spike was also on this box and I didn't like dig deep enough in, but yeah, well, that's what it is now. Um, uh, this. What would I want to say? I, uh, I actually thought originally that the tail is cut, but it's not. She just came with this short tail. Um, and also the mane. I mean, I think I got it now quite nice. I, it looks cute. It's not a good hair quality. It definitely is not. It's bearable. If you don't brush it over and over again, then it will be very horrible. But like this, I couldn't resist. <laughs> Twilight Sparkle. I can just say it again, so many Barbies. A couple of newer ones, like the ones to the left there, 
But, oh my goodness, even a lady lovely locks, I immediately put her aside. And all of the rest actually also like lovely 80s and 90s dolls. I kind of checked them all. A lot of them had broken necks and just uh, popped the head on. So like this um, Hart family mom in the dress of um, costume ball Barbie. This is a wonderful um, Akira doll. And there's the rest of the costume ball Barbie. This is one definitely from the 80s. This is Ski Fun Barbie. So lots of good ones. Ah, so I was really tempted and now yeah, here you can definitely see her head is just popped on. She's broken, which I can fix with this one as well. She's also wearing a lovely jeans outfit, like jeans fun outfit. This to me looked like a United Colors of Benetton outfit. It's not, and it's not even the original Barbie wearing it. Um, a couple of uh, like fake, so non-Barbies as well. This one also, broken neck. So the one that intrigued me most was the Skira. So I put her aside and uh, outside of the box were more dolls, but I definitely, yeah, she had her earrings and all that, but you know, also some others like this. Uh, this is a Petra, also lovely doll. Some older ones, some clone dolls. This, I kind of could uh, identify her, but then I checked her, <laughs> yeah, her crotch. She's actually the original um, a Western Barbie from 1980. Such a cool doll, but wait till you hear why I did not buy them. Was, was wollen Sie pro Puppe so haben ungefähr? Ja, ich wollte Nur, ich 20 Euro pro Stück haben. Nein, 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 dann kommt sie sofort zurück. Also das ist zu teuer. Ja. Yeah. And Lady Lovely Locks. Ja, this uh, vendor, it, she was inside. So it's like this, this flea market was like there was an outside with like new stuff or just like vegetables and stuff like that. In the back of the flea market more there were all the private vendors and then there was an inside part uh, with really antiques. Um, so I went in there, not a lot of stuff was interesting to me there, but this one lady and I saw it from afar um, had Lady Lovely Locks there. I had a ton of other Barbies, which at that moment, obviously, I didn't know. I just saw Lady Lovely Locks, and then she said, yeah, she has more bags of Barbies. And you, you, you saw it. There were quite a lot of good Barbies in there. Um, two uh, Marinas or Kira, so the very dark haired ones. Um, I don't know which ones. And a lot of other, other Barbies from the early 90s, late 80s. Um, but when I heard the prices, it was just like, uh, no, I'm not paying 20 euro for Barbie. They were not in good condition. None of them had their original outfits and almost all of them had the broken neck. So the head was just like this. Then you can see that the head is just put on and you could flip it uh, open. Um, so that, that I wouldn't pay that much. I mean, maybe I could have haggled her down a little bit per Barbie, but like, um, no. Uh, the only one that I still bought was Lady Lovely Locks here. I can't resist picking up a Lady Lovely Locks doll. Um, also, her head was also broken off, but that's very typical with Lady Lovely Locks. I also repaired that, so now she can at least move her head normally like this. Not really up and down anymore, but uh, that's the way I do it. I do, like I make a new head like pack uh, out of Warbler. But yeah, um, I knew that I had this spare Lady Lovely Locks dress at home still. This is one from a fashion pack. And so I thought, yeah, it's totally fine. I can pick her up. Uh, she was not 20 euros. Um, as she's a smaller doll, the, the, the woman said she would be 10 and then I could haggle her down to eight. So I paid eight euro for a lovely Lady Lovely Locks. I honestly don't know if this is like which version of Lady Lovely Locks this is. Uh, as she didn't have any accessories or dress or her dress or whatever. She came with a different dress. I, I don't have it anymore. It is ripped. I already threw it away. I'm sorry. Um, uh, 
and Lady Lovely Locks. I mean, if you are familiar with my videos, you know what Lady Lovely Locks is. This is a toy line by Mattel, so the same company as Barbie, but she does not go to the Barbie line. She's not just a sister of Barbie or anything. She is its own like princess doll line uh, from the late 80s. And um, it's one of my favorite toy lines. And I, I couldn't resist. They're not only dolls, they're also other like animals. There's a horse, there's a little pup, there's um, there are, uh, kitties, etc. And everything is super fairy tale like. And um, yeah, I mean, I can leave a Barbie behind, but I can't leave a Lady Lovely Dogs behind. Ah, oh, such a lovely vintage oversized cardigan. Oh my goodness, it screams early 90s. Such a lovely piece, but not for 40 euro. Thanks. And more dolls and Barbies and my scene and <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. All of that is new. I mean, new to me is like 10 years ago 15 years ago that's already kind of too too new to me um but you never know because this is for example an older uh, stuffy love so why not oh, okay cheapo doll why not have a look if there would be some other more vintage toys in there no this was another my scene i like them but i absolutely don't collect them a brat's shoe and um, I think, yeah, there's the missing, I mean, there's the Brad's doll for the uh, shoe that's missing for her. But I mean, so many dolls that day, really. What have we here? More toys, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't film. Wouldn't have filmed it. Another Barbie horse, a small kind of cupcake doll. Definitely not vintage. This thing, I think, goes to the Bayala line from Schleich. I'm almost certain. And then lots of cheapo little knickknacks. I think this is a frozen kind of toy camera or something. And um, yeah, this little Pinkie Pie. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's not a blind bag Pinkie Pie. Uh, the shape is different, but it's in the size of the typical G4 blind bag ponies. So why not? I like them. Ugh, ugly, <laughs> ugly bug toy. And oh my goodness, what did they do to you, Millie? Oh my goodness, children sometimes can be so cruel. What have we there? Ah, oh yeah, it was also filled up to the not to the brim, but I mean filled up with little mini toys, but. I just kept it with a Pinkie Pie for 20 cents. The last thing I found at this flea market uh, was this super tiny Pinkie Pie. So another pony, at least. I think I paid 10 cents for her. I found her, you, you saw it in this, like there were lots of tiny uh, toys, but just one that was interesting to me. It's a typical um, blind bag pony size think that she really came uh, from a blind bag I think because these pony sizes they were also released in really like packs where you could see what you're getting and uh, this pose is not a typical blind bag pose so she must have come from any other set I've not really researched it to be quite honest if someone knows where this Pinkie Pie comes from which set she comes from uh, I think her pose is just really adorable and although I don't display my blind bag ponies or the small g4 ponies uh, in that size anymore like by itself but i have a big jar with them uh, i i always pick them up when i see them because this jar is not completely filled up to the brim so there's always a little bit of space for more ponies and i love pinkie pie um yeah g4 if i didn't say that before so it must be from 2010 up until 2019 that's my guess during that time back to the youth hostel because remember that day also uh, the pony convention happened yeah over the Rhine so a nice view there in Düsseldorf and I also crossed path with this fun fair it wasn't really fully um, finished at that point but I think the next day it started 
I wish I could have gone there, but to be honest, I prefer going to a pony convention over a fun fair, so that's okay. Hello. Well, it's the next morning, and in between the last clip that you saw and this one, uh, the uh, Nachtlichtcon just happened, and this is obviously a different video. Um, it's Sunday here in Düsseldorf. My uh, luggage, can you see that, is already packed. All the ponies are in there that I bought yesterday. Ah. Um, but I want to go to one more flea market. Yes, I know I said two. There are two that are happening today. But they are, like, it's so weird. I just, at least I researched it again. They seem to start just at 11. Isn't that a weird time for a flea market to open up? I, I mean, there are a couple of flea markets in Berlin that open at maybe 10. But, um, I'm used to flea markets actually opening pretty early normally, so it's like 11. So I'm not able to do both of them because my train back to Berlin goes at um, 2 p.m. So there's not a lot of time in between and the flea markets are not exactly um, next to each other. So that's not gonna happen, so I have to choose uh, between them and probably I picked the wrong one. Probably I picked the one that's like not worth it or I don't know. They seem to be both pretty big. So I'm just doing one of them that's easier to reach by train in like inside Düsseldorf. So I don't know, let's see what that one is. Let's hope I find something. As I said, it's kind of Barbie day yesterday and today as well. I mean, you can clearly see that this is a Barbie collector. So he has really put all the pieces with names and it's cool, this is uh, Crystal Barbie's dress. I have the stola, I have the shawl at home. I don't have the dress itself, but um, ten is, I just got paid so much. thinking about, is this a dress? No, I don't think. Right, Tracy, this is something else. Our jewel secrets can. They look really good. Okay. I mean, you actually never find Barbies this good looking at flea market. <laughs> oh, just when they're from collectors. Let's also the bin with the accessories. Uh, he said a super hair Barbie, but I, I yeah, I could identify her. Like over there, he also has some uh, monchichi, some of the, uh, what are they called? Miyamo? I think Miyamo monchichi. They're yeah, crazy. <laughs> wow. They look, I don't know, they look freaks me out. That really, it's a little bit unsettling for me. <laughs> So the flea market I came today is very big, yeah, but it's also more um, antiques, I have a feeling. It's not so much private person with like <laughs> good or normal stuff, it's a lot of antiques. I mean, I think right now I'm in an area where it's more private people, so let's have a look. But I don't think that I will find something very good, and also the weather is horrible. Bah. anything it's not a good flea market for vintage 80s 90s stuff it's definitely all the stuff is older if you find toys they are from the I don't know 20s 30s 40s 50s dolls I don't know
are two absolutely stunning 80s Barbies. Uh, the black one, this one is Dee Dee from Barbie and the Rockers with her original earrings. She's actually wearing a um, uh, Western Fun Barbies jacket and I don't know who this one is, but they were too expensive for my taste, around 15 to 20 euros. Mm. A couple of Star Wars sets and figures. Um, those are all like from the 90s. Most of the stuff is a little bit episode one stuff. Not in good condition, but nice to see some of the powerful force of the prequels figures. Oh, Rogue Squadron. It's an old. Um, I actually no, I think it's a PC game. Oh, those are vintage. Which hand is this? It says 84, so this is yeah, it's the Return of the Jedi one. And the big Millennium Falcon. So cool. <laughs> no space for something like this. I don't even have place for big pony play sets. I think the only one I would be interested in this one, because young uh, Obi-Wan from episode 1, I don't have a young Obi-Wan. So let's ask for price. <laughs> like a banta. <laughs> and lots of, you know, you know, the collectors uh, where you could collect the uh, file cards and an old calendar. And there's more, there's like Battlefront 2, so some games. But actually, they, they just want to sell everything together, but like, <laughs> no. <laughs> mm. 15 euro for this little Obi-Wan Kenobi, so uh, I know that this one should not go for more than maybe five, so nope. Mm, are these the fakies? I actually like these sweetheart sister fakies. Lots and lots of fillies. Yeah, well, and the next day, not a lot of stuff to be found, to be honest. Although the flea markets looked quite um, promising. But, well, at least I picked up this little fakie pony. You know, when I don't find anything, and at least I find a cute fakie and I pick it up. No, but I kind of like these. Um, Fakies in the poses of the Sweetheart Sisters. So it uses an old G1 My Little Pony mold. The Sweetheart Sisters that are more slender, you know, uh, than the typical like normal adult ponies. Um, although I don't think that this is uh, a um, vintage fakie. Uh, I think it's probably from also 2000, 2010s even. Um, I have one other that has exactly the same symbol, has a different uh, body color. And the only thing I don't like about them is that they have these glass insert eyes. I just don't like this. I wish they would have normal painted on eyes. But um, yeah, my hope was that because she looks a little bit like this, she might be a glow in the dark. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's not. Sadly, she's not. Uh, she's still pretty cute. Um, and honestly, I have not rehaired her or anything. This is her real hair. She has a good hair quality. <laughs> I mean, she has the typical, like what, what a lot of fakies have, uh, the single plugs in her tail. So like the mane is rooted, her tail is rooted as well. Normal My Little Ponies have one big plug and not the single ones here, like one hair plug that comes out as a combined tail. This is an easy way to see that it is a fakie, uh, but also I know you know me. Markings. It had a big CE stamp here. I just removed it with, um, you know, um, acetone. So I just have her. I was hoping she would be glow in the dark. She's not. She's still pretty cute. I actually also came to the other flea market that I didn't think I would make it because of the time. But as the other one, I was pretty quick through all of the vendors and. This one is also absolutely not worth it. Can you see over there these like 
uh, I don't know, these professional uh, vendors with new stuff over there. That's something I absolutely don't know from Berlin. Uh, okay, up there's there are a couple of private sellers here. But like, I don't know, there's nothing. It's nothing. I'm happy that Berlin flea markets are actually better. The only vendor that had at least a couple of toys. This is another my scene. So I saw quite a lot of my scenes that day, but as I already said in, in a clip before, I don't collect them. So my hope was just like, oh, maybe at this very, very boring flea market, there's at least something, but like, yeah, this little fakey pony, but I have a couple of those already. So no little dinosaur troll thing. Lots of wooden and baby toys and uh, I don't know, this looked kind of interesting. I don't know what it was. It was very pastel. But this, this is another vendor, uh, was kind of fun. This was the best vendor at that flea market for sure. Uh, this whole box was filled up to the brim with vintage Disney bags. Um, you can tell they are vintage, you know, the colors, they are definitely early 90s. Um, the prints. Uh, I was really tempted by a couple of them, but most of them were like, you know, children's like backpacks, etc. And those are like, you, you cannot really use them. They are really small or like these little pouches. Uh, so even these, uh, what are they called? Like suspenders, um, you know, drawstring bags. This child or this person must have been a really big Disney fan in the early 90s and had a lot of the all of that stuff the colors you can definitely tell uh, that was a little bit more you know sturdy little pouches like the red and uh, yellow one and also this um, light pink and blue one was the most fun and i picked it up and the last thing this little bag i mean this last flea market was the worst worst flea market i've ever visited uh, i wouldn't even call it really a flea market it was just like new stuff, new cheap goods. Uh, I, I, I don't know, I can't really, there were maybe a handful of private vendors with really like flea market stuff. Um, I'm kind of glad that most of the flea markets in Berlin are way better than this. So there are not a lot of flea markets like this in Berlin. So I didn't know that. Uh, but apart, like apparently in other parts of Germany, this is the typical thing that a flea market is. Half of it or I don't know, 80% just new stuff. But then I found this, this was from a private vendor. They had this one box, you saw it, full of like uh, old uh, Disney bags. Uh, I guess all of them from the early 90s. Uh, I don't have a date on this and I cannot really tell you much about it, but it obviously spoke to me because of the pastel colors. Uh, it reminds me of the, you know, of the canoes that you, that you can take in Disneyland. Uh, it's very pastel. It says Putman original. I couldn't really research anything about Putman bags. Uh, if I research Putman, it just gives me another company that does electronics or something nowadays. Uh, sounds very German, Putman. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's just essentially a small bag that I can like carry around. Typically what I do at flea markets, as this is a children's bag, it has a very short strap, so it will hang very high here. And I can put my camera and my small things in here, batteries and whatever I need and always have it in reach. And I have already worn it a couple of times outside of the flea markets, just, you know, putting a little bit of money in there, whatever. It's cute, it's pastel, it's Disney. And it was, I don't remember, two euro <laughs> or something. Um, yeah. Ooh. So like, when you see something like this, this is not a flea market for me. This is new stuff. I mean, cheap stuff that's at our local, I don't know, weekly markets, everyday markets, something like this. But not, not, a, not, a, not a flea market. So this is really something I don't know from Europe, like from, from Berlin. I would not call this a flea market in Berlin. But I found something, you saw it, a little Mickey. A little Mickey Mouse purse. I will use that one when I go to flea markets. So 
There's a Barbie horse. Okay, at least. But yeah. This is all new stuff. This is not flea market stuff. Such bullshit, really. But okay. At least I tried. I gave my best. The two flea markets that are open here, I went to. So that I can go back to the uh, main station and, I don't know, eat something. I'm not sure if I really uh, filmed an outro. If not, then this is the outro here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flea market trip in Düsseldorf. So, uh, kind of far away from where I live. It's still in Germany, but it's uh, quite the opposite side of, uh, of Germany. I'm from Berlin and I kind of like Berlin flea markets a little bit more, but the one that I visited on Saturday was actually pretty good. So many Barbies and I picked up, picked up amazing goods, so I can't complain. So thanks a lot for watching. See you real soon and may the toys be with you. Bye!